In this video, I want to give a quick demonstration of the LMBF zones indicator used to identify areas of supply and demand in your chart across different time frames, but also to give other information such as trend information or time of day in different time zones. So to start off with, I'm just going to drag the indicator from my navigator box onto the chart, accept the defaults. You know, so you show your way, we get some zones come up for the weekly chart. If I go through the downtown frames, you'll see different color zones appear. And this is like the default setting. For any of these settings, I can press the F key on the keyboard and it just fills them, fills them in accordingly. And it will actually remember these individually for each of the time frames. So I can do it for the four hour and daily. Weekly is not filled in. Let's go back to the four hour, turn it off. Let's go back to daily, turn that one off. So this is how I like to have it to start off with. So if we go quickly to the top left corner, we see the information that's been given. So we have times in different time zones for Tokyo, London, New York, and your local time based on the time on your computer. We have some trends for the current and the next higher time frame. And this changes as you change time frame. So for instance, we go to the one hour, we can see one hour down, H4 down. We go to the four hour, we see four hour down, and daily down. Okay, underneath that, we have the equivalent trends for all the time frames going from weekly down to the one minute, should you need that for any things. Next one is a slip period, which is currently the four hour, and that defaults to the current time frame that you're on. Though later I'll come back to that and show you what happens when you change that. Now it's on the daily, now it's on the weekly. Okay, we have a settings line. Now I've not got any settings on at the moment. That's really to do with filtering criteria. And then zero, if you want to reset the indicator in the bottom zones to show you which zones you're showing on the chart at the moment. Okay, so let's come back to the um, one hour chart. It's one of my favorite time frames. So there's a number of buttons you can press. The first thing I want to do is show you the menu, which you get by pressing the key with a question mark on. And you'll see it's relatively compressed in this particular example. If you're using a, a bigger screen or lower resolution screen, it spreads out a bit more but it's still readable like that. So first things first, C will turn the zones on and off. So if I press the C key now, they will disappear. And you'll find that's true for all the time frames. So C is like a general turn it off. So you can see just the raw price section underneath. Press it again, it comes back on. Okay, H, it shows the next higher time frame zones on the current time frame that you're show, uh, looking at right now. So currently I'm looking at the one hour chart. If I press the H key, it shows you the four hour zones on the one hour chart. And if you look at the top left here, you can see the second period is now the H4. Likewise, if you press L, it'll go down to the lower time frame. So it goes to the one hour from the H4, and then down to the 15 minute. Again, if I press zero, it resets it back to the default settings. If you press T, then that essentially only shows trends uh, zones in line with the current trend as shown on the indicator. So for H1, we have a down. So if we press the T, then any demand zones disappear. And we're just left with the supply zones. Press it again, and it comes back. Next down, we have D and S, which toggles demand and supply zones on and off. I press D, toggles demand zones off. Press again, come back on. Press S, turns the supply zones on or off, and then on again. Now, this only actually, well, this actually applies to the current time frame zones you're looking at. So, for this instance, let me turn the supply zones off on a one hour. I go up to the daily, and I turn the demand zones off on the daily. If you go back to the one hour, you can see that supply zones are turned off there and the uh, demand zones are turned off on the daily. Okay, so once again, I'll press the zero to reset them back. 
can see that supply and demand showing on both the H1 and the daily chart. Okay, next down we have the M key. This just merges any zones which are overlapping into making one big zone. So here we have a couple of zones or three zones overlapping. So that would make one big zone out of it, such as this. Press it again and it reverts back to the three separate zones. Alternatively, you can press the O key, which is for overlapping, and that does essentially the same thing, but rather than merging them, it just takes the outer zone and only displays that. So there, two of the zones have disappeared, and we just have the outer zone. You press it again, then the three zones again come back. Okay, so next thing I want to do is show you how you can change or have different zones for different time frames on the same chart. So this is the one hour chart. Let's say we want to show the four hour zones on this chart as well. So the first thing I need to do is to change the selected period up here. I do this by using the, the greater than or less than keys on the keyboard. So if I press greater than, see it changes to H4. And then if I press X key, that will turn the so the Z key that will turn the zones for the H4 time frame on on this H1 time frame. Press it again, it turns it off. So whatever you have selected on the selected period, at the moment it's H4, if you press the Z key that turns the zones on and off for that particular time frame on your current display. So I could actually turn off the H1 zones by going down to the H1 as a selected period, pressing X so Z, and then that disappears as well. Pressing again, comes on. Let's go up to the daily. There, see, daily is selected. Press Z, and the daily zone comes on. Not very many, as you say, the bigger time frames. then there's gonna be fewer zones on the chart, and again, we deeper. So I'll turn that off again. We're back to the one hour zones only. So next time we look at the zones which have been retested. And I think that most of the zones here have actually been retested. So probably not a great example. Let's see if I can find one. Okay, so here's H4 chart. And what you'll see is that some of the lines are actually slightly thicker than the others. And the thick ones are the ones which haven't been retested at this stage. Whereas the slightly thinner ones have been retested at least once. So if I press the U key, sorry, the R key for retested, then that will get rid of the thin lines and just leave the, the thicker lines. So one, two zones with thick lines uh, which haven't been retested yet. So I press the R key again, then the other lines come back. Um, next, I want to show that you can double click on a particular zone and it will disappear. If you double click again, it comes back so that's pretty useful you just want to clean up your chart for any particular reason it will come back if you change time frame though so i double click to go with it go to daily come back to h4 it does come back so you haven't lost it forever okay so that chain tells you most of the things um if you press the uh, key with the apostrophe on you see you get labels for each zone. In this top one, S is for supply, H4 is a time frame, and 0.61 lots is a position size um, that you might want to trade based on the settings that we have as parameters. So I'll just bring up the parameters for this. You'll notice that we have account balance. If it's zero, then it just takes your actual account balance and percentage of account to risk in lot size, which is 1% currently. So based on those, for each zone, it calculates a position size that you might want to use if you're placing your entry at the bottom of the zone and your stop at the top of the zone. So that just saves a little bit of work if you do actually want to trade these zones. Okay, so I think that's all I want to do. Um, for this particular video, if you want to reset, you press the zero key. If you want to get the indicator completely, you press the Q key for crit and it disappears. 
That's all. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video.